Is anybody still cold? Are you sitting close to somebody? Sit closer. It's okay. Nobody's going to bite you. This is a place where love is safe. It's safe. At least we hope it is, right? Find somebody at least that you trust a little bit and cuddle up a little bit. It's okay. Um, we've got a... Boy, it's, it's, uh, we're going into 2013. Is everybody ready for that? Someone, I saw something on Facebook, and it sounded kind of cruel, but I liked it. It said, you know, if, if 2012 was difficult, and you had some hard times, and, you know, and you're wondering if next year is going to be a, any better, suck it up, because it's going to be the same thing all over again. <laughs> but God is good in the midst of it. It's going to be okay. God still is in control. That's the good news. So if anybody's extra cold, I have an extra jacket here, and I'll rent it for $30 an hour. <laughs> It'll go into our benevolence fund. It's okay. No. Yeah, you're welcome to put another layer on if you need it, if you came unprepared. or Sometimes we get out here to the beach, and the wind's just a little bit chilly. So this morning, actually, Bob and I had a plan to uh, finish up the, the book of Ephesians, but we're going to change it up. So while we're doing our music, I would like you guys to think about the past year and how God has moved in your life. And we're going to have a little open mic service today for some testimonials from people about how God has moved in your life. So I would ask you, uh, while we're doing music, just think about maybe if, pray about it. Maybe God wants you to come up here and share. Here's how it works. When you share what God does in your life, it ministers to somebody. And if God's calling you to come up and speak, it will minister to somebody. I promise it will. Because God wouldn't call you up here to do it if he didn't have an intent for it. That's just my thought. So uh, as we do our music, we're going to do some music that will be pointedly about how good God is, and maybe that will encourage you to speak. But don't be shy. There's nobody here who's going to make fun of you for what you say. And just come boldly and speak what God's done. And we'll have a little open mic service today. How's that? Pretty nice change, huh? Yeah. So let us do the music, then we'll do some announcements, and then we'll have the open mic. Mr. Joe. Ready? Yeah, no prayer. Oh, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to rush through it because I'm as cold as everybody, but I think we ought to stop and pray. That's a good idea, Joe. <laughs> Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the blessing of your son. We thank you for the gift that you've given us that we could find freedom, God, that we could find a leadership of your spirit that would help us to walk in a way, God, that we didn't understand in the natural. But when we invite you into our lives and we allow you to lead and guide us, we find that life seems to smooth out a little bit. But God, I, I just want to be reminded that it's not that the world has changed. It's that you've changed us from the inside out. It's not that the circumstances around us change, but it's that your spirit gives us peace and comfort in the midst of the world. God, your word says that we are to live in the world, but not as a part of it. And the only way we can do that is by faith in you. So through faith in you, God, we come to you and we trust you for more. We ask you to continue to lead us and guide us and to remind us that no matter how bad it seems in this world, that you are always good and you're always blessing us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 7 in your songbook. We'll tell you about it. See what you think. The world we go. It didn't come cheap, but I got it for free. It's the hope of glory, Christ in me. Can't stop talking about everything you've done. It's the best thing to happen in the world we've done. It didn't come cheap, but I got it for free. 
do. Well, do you know what I'm saying is true? Do you know him? Yes, I do. Well, if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Well, do you know him? Yes, I do. But well, do you know what I'm saying is true? Do you know him? Yes, I do. Well, if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Well, I can't stop talking about everything he's done. It's the best thing to happen since the world begun. It didn't come cheap, but I got it for free. It's the whole world glory in Christ in me. Well, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Well, do you know him? Yes, I do. Well, do you know what I say is true? Do you know him? Yes, I do. Well, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. We stop talking about everything he's done. It's the best thing to happen since the world begun. It didn't come cheap, but I got it for free. It's the hope of glory in Christ in me.
that might get you stirred up to have a little think of those good times and realizing that God is good to you. He has called you to reach the hearts of others. So that's what this song is about, and it's not in your book, but I think you'll enjoy it. We do. Page 
in the house, even here at Archie's, that wherever we are, he is there also, right? He has to be there. He said he put his, his spirit within us. So, Good job, gang. You want me to come back there, Wendy? No? no? Oh, just the kids. Okay. She was like, hey. She pointed at the camper and went like this. <laughs> I'm like, my wife is right here and your husband's right there. <laughs> On film, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I got a crazy uh, sense of humor. And she says, I'm good, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the kids are going to go back with Miss Wendy <laughs> and uh, do the kids' class. Um, I don't think we have the heat plugged in out there yet, but they get a bunch of warm bodies in there and hot air flowing. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to lay this out there. Um, the songs that we sang this morning, I can't stop talking about everything he's done. Um, God is so good to me. He's, um, he's made a way for me to, to walk in this world where I thought I couldn't find peace about 18 years ago, and, and yet I didn't find the peace of the world. I found the peace of God, and it's been a, a growing experience. We talked over Christmas about the opportunity that God sent by the gift of his son, the opportunity to choose to live in this world or to choose to live according to his leadership, his spirit within us. So I'm going to keep it real simple, and it might make a couple people uncomfortable, but there's going to be some un uncomfortable silence up here until somebody comes up and takes the microphone. So uh, it's on you now, and I'm going to ask you to trust God for whatever he's got, and pick the mic up if you come up, put it real close to your mouth so people can hear you, and let's share what God did in our lives. My friend Travis... I didn't want to leave you uncomfortable for that long with the silence, so. Uh, I was sitting around my house last night, hanging out with my little daughter. We were, you saw us dancing over here, my little Lucy. And uh, God told me that maybe I should come out and share something, and then I show up. And Dave said, you know what we're going to do today is just an open testimonial where you come up and you share what God has done. And... Uh, I know I got these shades on. I'll remove them. But I was, I was sitting over there, and I had a couple tears behind my shades when I, when I sang God is so good to me, you know. And I, I come from, uh, you know, I went to a, another church for quite a few years. And I was on the praise and worship team, and I sang, and I poured my heart out to God every Sunday, you know, with everybody. And uh, the music means a lot to me, you know. The reason why God is so good, I mean, there's a million reasons. I've struggled so hard for the past year. Um, I was married to my old pastor's daughter. Careful with that, young guys. Take it easy. 
And in general, if you are going to get married, take it easy. I don't care who it is. Take it easy. Take your time. Be careful. Make sure you know who you are and what your identity is, and make sure they know who they are and what their identity is. Because if you don't know who you are, you don't know what you can give. You can't give anything. So um, I had that little girl kept from me for six months, not by a judge, not by DCF, but by another person in the Christian community. And what I figured out from this process is that it doesn't matter what title is before your name. We're sick. We're born into a world with sickness. Humans have sickness. We're born with it. It's a disease. It's sin. It's. But God is good. God is good no matter what. And by, by remaining in relationship with my, my people in God, my Christian brothers and sisters, and by instead of reacting calling a friend instead of being emotional I've been able to wait it out I've been able to go through court forever oh my god it can be dragged on so long careful who you marry and it's not fun um, but it took a long time I, I went an entire six months without having her one time and this is the first Sunday morning I've had my daughter And it's awesome. And she knows who daddy is. The real one, not the imposter. This guy, <laughs> the real dad. And uh, she loves me. She loves my family. She just got to meet a good half of them over the Christmas holidays. And she's well-adjusted, comfortable. And um, by following God and by God just taking it easy, being patient when I didn't want to be patient. I know kind of what Job must have felt, but I walked the high road. I didn't say a single curse word to the other party. Not one. Not in an email or a text or in person or on the phone. Not at all. And I just took it easy. I was able to hold my tongue. And it's paying off because I've got that little girl about half of the time. She knows who I am and she loves me very much. And that's why God is good lately. And that's all I have. Thank you. Good morning, folks. How many of you out there say, God does not talk to me? I'd like to relate a story. My wife and I, driving north on US-1, came across the, or uh, came by the Salvation Army, you know, the big red and white building. Decided to pull into the parking lot, went inside. My wife went one direction, I went another. Came across a living room set made of bamboo, stuffed pillows, a large sofa, actually a sofa bed, uh, two chairs matching. I said, hey, that looks pretty nice. Went to sit down in one of the chairs. There was a $20 bill. Well, you know if I stand up in Salvation Army and say, who lost a $20 bill? So I, so I put it in my pocket. And sat down, of course. My wife came along, and I said, what do you think of this? She said, gee, that's pretty nice. She sat down on the sofa. About that time, another lady came by and sat down on the sofa adjacent. And she said, you going to buy that set? And I said, gee, I think so. And she said, well, what I'm looking for is a big L-shaped sofa to fit in my living room that we just rented. And I turned and looked at her and said, I'm going to give you exactly what you described. And, and she said, what do you mean? I said, we have a large L-shaped sofa, has two recliners, sofa bed, and it's right where this set is going to go. And she blinked and didn't believe it. But I turned and gave her the $20 bill. She later hired a fellow with a pickup truck to come and get that sofa. Now, you can't tell me that God wasn't talking in that instance. She did not know what we had in our living room. There is no way she could have known. Now, this past year has been very good to me in some other ways, uh, let alone cancer, treatment for two months, 
I'm here and hoping to live a lot of years. Uh, God is good. I told Dave yesterday at, um, at practice, I said, the next time you have um, a testimonial, I said, I'm going to sing mine. Because um, I think I was born with a song in my heart. I've, uh, I've sung all my life, and uh, I just love to share what God has given me. And um, so this pretty much sums it up. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he understood, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. He took something beautiful out of my life. If ever there were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turn to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortunes, they were lost. So I wrap them up in the rags of my life and lay them at the cross. Something beautiful something good all my confusion he understood all i had to offer him was brokenness and strife but he made something beautiful out of my life and he has he uh, this past year <clears throat> this past year my youngest daughter um whom I'm, I'm i'm proud of all my kids but my youngest one especially um she took a, a leap of faith she had been to thailand a couple of years ago and she went to guatemala this past april and she knew she wanted to do something in mission work. So uh, she had been working a, a very good job up in Atlanta and making a nice salary. Been with the company 10 years, and she just she wasn't happy. And she said, Mom, I just need to, to find something where I can feel like I'm doing what God wants me to do. And she prayed about it, and she um, was doing some volunteer work for a group called Wellspring Living. And it's a home... Uh, the one that she's in is a home for women who have been involved in sex trafficking and the pornography industry, uh, prostitution. And so she went there as a volunteer, and it wasn't but a couple of weeks, and a position opened up. And so December 1st, she quit her safe job, and she went to work full-time for Wellspring Living. And I'm so proud of her. I really am. So thank you. Patty and I had been attending an area church for years, and we were praying for a place where we could, could be involved in the ministry and actually contribute. And we prayed and we prayed. About a year ago, January, Carla invited us to come here and visit. And uh, the day that we come to visit, Pastor steps up and says, you know, I want to start a video ministry. So in a matter of weeks, we had this mini video ministry up and running. And uh, when God moves, and you know it's him that's doing it, you know you're in the right place. You know you're doing what you're supposed to do. And it's a real blessing. And it is. And coming here has been totally changed our lives. And uh, we just encourage you, if you think that you hear God speaking to you, just pray about it and pray about it. And sometimes it may not be 
comfortable for you. But if God is telling you and speaking to you, it's got to be right. It's going to be right, and he's going to see you through whatever it is. So we encourage you to do that. And we want to thank everybody here because this has changed our lives, and we want to thank the Lord for bringing us here. And uh, that's all we can say. It's just been such a blessing, and it's totally changed our lives. We want to thank you and thank him. Some of you might have heard this story a couple of years ago, but um, I was here telling Bob a few years back, um, just had a conversation, and he was, um, he's like, you know, would you mind sharing that story? So I'm going to share it again. Um, you know, I grew up with many different gods, um, you know, money and women and all that fake stuff. Um, and God has been putting people in my life for probably over 20 years that I've been rejecting because um, I wasn't brought up to rely or depend on anything but myself. You know, brought up in an Italian family, a little strict, that men don't cry, uh, men don't share anything, uh, and keep your mouth shut. And um, I had a pastor who, who's from here, from Fort Pierce, for about 15 years been trying to get me down here. Um, I don't know if you just could tell by my accent, but I'm not from here. Uh, <laughs> and I never, I never even heard of Fort Pierce. I've been coming down south to Boca for probably 20 years. I never heard of Fort Pierce. And about six years ago, my life was so upside down. Um, I had nothing left, and I came down here. Um, unfortunately, I came down with my will, and you know, I wound up in this uh, great big hotel called Rock Road twice. Um, but the second time I was there, it was, it, was, uh, it was November 29th, a few years back, and it was my daughter's 16th birthday. And I wasn't able to contact her because I was in jail. And I... Um, Um, I made a phone call to my family and friends to, to bond me out, and nobody would. At that point, I believe everyone had enough. Um, so I made some calls once I got settled in to obviously different people to get money in my commissary so I could bond myself out. And I wound up with the money in my commissary, and um, I called up the bail bondsman, Carol Collins, and she answered the phone, and um, as she said hello, I wasn't able to speak. And I didn't know at the moment what was going on, but um, it's still, still very powerful to me. Um, a voice told me, you really want to do this. If you bond yourself out, you're going to be back in the same predicament you were your whole life. So after maybe 10, 15 seconds, and she kept saying, hello, hello, um, I knew it would be the worst move of my life to bond myself out. And I knew that was God telling me, trust me for once. Just trust me for once that everything's going to be okay. And I hung up that phone. I spent over a month in jail. Christmas, um, and, and I say this, that it was one of my best Christmases because I was told by, by another pastor in there that they're going to be giving out these care packages, you know, with some honey buns and Snickers and coffee, and, and if anyone's been in jail, that's, that's, that's a, you know, a pretty good package to get, Christmas or no Christmas. So I was saving certain items because I'm a coffee drinker. And I was trading my Snickers and my honey buns for a spoonful of coffee so I could have a good Christmas. And that's one Christmas I'll never forget. But I know of God, if I didn't listen, God's been speaking to me for many years, but I just thought it was the vodka talking. I knew that if I didn't submit myself to him that day, I probably won't be standing here right now.
few years ago, I was coming out of a church, just going out of lunch, and a voice said, go to Vero Beach Hospital. And I thought, boy, that's powerful. So I said to my wife, let's go to Vero Beach Hospital. We walk into reception. I said, a voice in my head told me to come in here, and they look at like you're crazy. And I said, well, God told me to come and see somebody here. And I said, if somebody needs help, just write a room number. We go and talk to them or pray for them or whatever. And I said, sir, privacy laws don't allow that in America. In England, you could. I said, well, just write a number for me. I'll go and see them. He said, no, we can't do that, sir. And guess why he sent me there? To see him. He was laying not very happy, not very well. And I thought, wow, when God says he doesn't talk, he does talk to us. The woman I was with, she took me to the Lord. I married her. I asked for a divorce five years ago. And God hates broken promises. He hates divorce. So I asked her for a divorce. I went to church that night. And the sermon that night was how God hates divorce. Can you imagine? Next week, I went to church. The sermon was how God hates broken promises. Do you remember your wedding vows? Richer and poorer, sickness and health. And I'm turning on this woman. I'm going to leave her. So in English law, we get a divorce a bit simpler and cheaper than yours. And I made a promise to her that I would support her forever after as long as I could. Well, it was good for a few years. My income was here. My commitments are here. But as my income dropped, 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 I either paid her, her in England we call it maintenance, she called it alimony. And it got to a point where I either eat or pay her. So i got to face her and tell her I can't continue this promise I made to her. So I'm stewing in my pain. And I go into England, and I get a phone call saying that she rang in, in America looking for me. I'm at a friend's house. He gets a phone call saying she's looking for me. Another friend rings me in England, catches me in the street, said, your wife's looking for you, your ex-wife. My God, the pain I'm in. I just want to go to the toilet. I want to whittle myself. I can't take no more. So I get the courage, drive to see her, go and see her. And she tells me, here, take this money. She gives me money. And she says, God told her to release me away from my promise. And what a God that I walked away on her, broke the promise I made to him. And she released me through him. And I'm here. I'm here because I like him. Why do I like him? God sent me to see him. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Donna. Dave calls me Bonnie because I always have this hat on. I started coming to Archie's about five years ago and became involved with our prayer ministry. And this little book I started three years ago, I just checked out the date, and have been keeping records of all of our prayer requests. There are eight of us on the prayer team, and after we pray after the service, I send out these prayer requests on the internet and they go out to several hundred people. I was looking through my book, and we have had so many answers to prayer. I really do believe prayer works. Yesterday, I received a message from Stephanie, who's on the prayer team. One of her 30-year-old friends, Jason, went with his buddy fishing out on the lake. They found the boat, but they haven't found the men. So I'd like for all of you to join us in prayer for Jason and his friend and the family and hope that they can find these people today. Thank you, and God bless Archie's and everyone who makes it happen, and especially Patty McGee. Hello, how y'all doing? Um, I just wanted to share a little little testimony I had. Um, it's kind of like yours almost, in a way. But um, for me, it was my per it was my personal, you know, experience. Uh, I got into a little trouble a while back. Wrote some bad checks, and um, they put me they had put me on probation and all this, and everything was was um, 
I had to pay back the money and all. Well, I was, I, I just basically, I, I, I was on the run. You know, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to, um, you know, face the police, face the probation officer, all that stuff, you know. So for a couple of years, I was just, you know, just avoiding everybody. But um, one day, it was, it was literally three weeks before Christmas, and I just heard the spirit come come over me and say, "Go turn yourself in to jail." So I don't know. What, I mean, everybody everybody was like, "You're crazy," you know, turn yourself in the jail. I turned myself in, and I just said, "All right, I'm trusting you with it, God. This is your <laughs> this is your plan." And by the time it was all over with, I told my I told my father, you know, to go to you know get the paperwork so I can show the judge and everything. And I literally only had five dollars left to pay to pay to be to be completely finished. And I gotta say that that, that was definitely I can look back and see how God has has worked in my life and brought me from where I was at to where I am now and I just thank God, you know, for every day for it. Thank you. I figured I'd jump in here real quick. Um, a lot of people do know me. I'm always around the beach here. Uh, what people don't know about my past is it hasn't been too ugly, but uh, I've always been a selfish, um, not giving uh, taker. And since I started uh, actively coming to this church here, uh, I've really grown spiritually. One thing I have learned is and I just let him talk to me. God told me to help people out. Uh, my problems are insignificant to others. But the one thing I have learned is how to be a listener. Not just let it go in one ear and out the other and pacify someone. But actually listen and see if I can't guide. And I grabbed myself and uh, went to the beach, cleansed my soul and everything. And I told him, I said, time for me to start helping others out some way, some shape, in some form. I have several friends that are going through some difficult issues. And my own testimony is I've been through a lot, uh, traveling here and there, trying to find inexpensive living and falling into hands of people with bad habits and uh, found myself sleeping in my truck trying to find solitude. The solitude I have found is in the power of God and exercising his faith. And I have great faith in him. My gift is uh, trying to help others out because I know my problems aren't as bad as others. And so that was uh, something I decided to start doing was going up to people who I have met and know they have uh, some real bad issues. And I decided to take their issues and teach them what I have learned and grown into with my spiritual self. And uh, the blessings I have received from God are enormous. I've, seen t I've uh, watched testimonies from various uh, celebrities uh, that could not believe how God moves you. One thing I have learned is God is great he will bless you in ways you've never even thought possible he does it to me all the time and every chance I get I will talk to him and he just works amazing ways with me and so I figured hey I get all these blessings for free you know what it's time I started helping others out quit being a selfish uh, person that I used to be and I am reversing that now. And I feel so good about it. There's no gifts in this world that can, uh, material gifts that can match anything. It's the ability to give to others and help them through their terrible times. And I'm finding that to be very gratifying. Thank you.
So far, so good, right? I, I usually wouldn't push, but for some reason I sat over there and I, I kept hearing that there's somebody out there who has one more thing to say. I'm not sure who it is. There you go. I knew there was somebody. God's, see, I, it's simple, those simple little things I learned to listen to. Maybe you just needed a little encouragement. My name's Diana. Just recently started coming. Since the last time I was here, I'm reconciled with, after a 20-year marriage and 12 years gone, ended, we're reconciling. Amen. God is still good. Um, one of the things that is encouraging to me is that, and it's not this church, by the way, gang, that makes the difference. Maybe it is. Maybe it, it's where you found the answers. But the answers are in listening to God. Um, somebody said something to me this morning, like, oh, look at all the people here. Is this the Dave show? And I said, I hope not. I don't want this ever to be the Dave show or the Joe show or the anybody show but God and Jesus. And um, he, he does work through us here, and we're blessed to be a part of it. But, but don't get it wrong. Don't follow a man. Please don't. I did it. It's empty. You'll find out that it's temporary. Even if it takes 20 years, you'll find out that it's temporary. Temporary is anything less than eternal. So do yourself a favor and don't follow something that's not eternal. It'll make a big difference in your life. People no matter how good they are, are still people, and they will still let you down. I promise I will let you down one day. I promise Joe will. Not because he will make a mistake, but because we're human. Because we will never live up to your expectations of what you think you need us to be. But I can promise you this. God always will meet your needs. Always. I'm living proof of it. If you want to go deeper in your studies, you guys hear me say it all the time. We teach the Alpha Series at the office. We teach the boundaries. Learn how to say no and yes. I hear so many people who struggle in life because they, oh, my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. So-and-so is going to come live with me. And, you know, something like that. Is it, well, whose house is it? Well, it's my house. Well, do you want them to live in your house? No. Well, why are they moving in then if you don't want that? Well, because I can't say no. You got to hear that for what it is, gang. If you really don't want it to happen, then why would you say yes? You see what I'm saying? Unless God's leading in it, you got to be aware. You got to be aware of what's going on. That little truth is something that you can learn in an eight week. It'll help. Work toward an understanding in an eight-week course called the Boundary Series. It starts on the ninth. The Alpha Series talks about the very thing. This is important to me <clears throat> because this is what God's doing in my life. The Bible wasn't written for you to figure out how to tell other people to live. Matter of fact, it wasn't written for me to figure out how to tell you how to live. The Bible is written for me to look at, and it says right in there, as like I'm looking into a mirror to see myself the way God sees me through the righteousness of his son. And when I ask him to show me my flaws, he will be faithful and just to show me my flaws. It is about my growth for me. And the Bible is about your growth for you. What we immediately do is become Pharisees and Sadducees and we start to judge and condemn other people, and it comes very, very naturally. But that's not what it's for. That little verse that says, stop worrying about the speck in somebody else's eye until you have that telephone pull out of your face means everything. God's trying to deal with you. And as long as you're focused on everybody else, he'll let you do that too. He'll let you do it. But he really wants you to focus on you. I don't believe that God 
this sounds very harsh, but I think, I think God gave it to me. I don't think God cares how you feel. I think he cares what you become and who you become. And it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be uncomfortable to get some of those spots. But one of the things that we need the clarity in that's taught not only in the Alpha series, but the next teaching that's coming up is even, even another level deeper of understanding. It's called God, uh, Grace, the Forbidden Gospel. We need to understand that God has already done everything we need. He's already made it available to us, and our biggest failure is, fa is our faith, is believing that is truth for me. And it's so much easier when things get hard here to go, you know what? You're really messing up. You know what? You should be doing this, this, and this. And to dole out advice for somebody else when I don't even have it straight in my life yet. God wants me working here. It says, work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Yeah, but my wife. Yeah, but my husband. God's going to bring you to the cross all by yourself. I promise. And he'll deal with them too. Exactly the way they need to be dealt with. And it's not going to be pretty sometimes. That's a harsh message, isn't it? My encouragement for you for this new year is to maybe get that message. I think if you got that message and said, God, how do you want me? What do you want me to adjust? How do you want me to grow? How do you want me to love somebody? Show me what I need. And I think if you make that your New Year's resolution, as much as I don't like them, because we're fallible, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. You watch me go. You know what? In three weeks, I'm going to feel like a loser, and it ain't going to be because I lost the weight. It's going to be because I gave up, because I don't have the will power. Seek God's will, and you'll have his power. Seek God's will, and you'll have his power. If your New Year's resolution to yourself is, God, I want you more in my life, and you really mean it in your heart, I guarantee you by this time next year, you might be one of these people up here going, wow, you won't believe what God did. And those of us who have experienced it will go, oh, of course we will. God is that good. Of course we will. Yeah, but you don't understand. Oh, yes, we do. Because we know the Father that you started to trust. If you're looking for to go deeper, I can't encourage you more. I hear it all the time. Well, one of these days I'm going to come to your class. Okay. <laughs> so how come there's so many empty chairs? I'm just asking a question, right? I really need some direction. Good. Good. I have some classes. There are other churches that have classes. There are plenty of places to learn. When you make a commitment to God and yourself, you'll be there. I'm not trying to push you just so I have 20 people in class. It's really not that important to me. If there's one person seeking God, I'm going to be there doing my class because that's what God called me to do. If there's 40, then the, all the more blessing for me. That's the way I see it. We're not collect money. We're not about the money. We're about helping you get on track with your faith so that you will do what God calls you to do. I don't know what that is, but he does. Fair enough? So you heard some good testimonies here today. You heard some starting stories. You haven't heard any finishing stories yet, have you? Because that's the last day when we take our breath and we get to go home and be perfected. The one finishing story I would share with you is the one of my mom that happened when I was 23 years old when I walked into her hospital room. And she, couldn't, she could not speak an intelligible word for over three weeks. She couldn't squeeze my hand and tell me that she recognized me. But that day, when I walked into the hospital room, she was whole. <clears throat> she thanked her mother for coming to see her off. At 50 years old, she was. She thanked her brother for coming to see her off, and she looked me in the eye, and she said, I know where I'm going. Go find God and come be with me. And she closed her eyes with a smile, with peace that I've never seen on her face in the natural, and she left and went home. That's a great ending story that I want. I know where I'm going. Go find God. 
come be with me. I get to be with my mom one day and so many other people that I know had real love for the Lord and for me. Father, as we close this morning, it's my deepest heart's desire that each individual would seek you personally, that they would ask you to lead and guide in their lives, that they would turn their will and their life over to you, however they understand you at this moment. And God, when they do so, that they show you, that you're able to show them so much more than they ever thought possible. And as you do, they'll follow you more. It is my deepest desire that this ministry here at Archie's is the Jesus show, is the God show, is the truth that will set us free. Whenever it becomes about me, God, I ask you to remind me and, and let me know. Because it's all about you, God. And it always has been and it always will. God, we thank you for your eternal love. And we want more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Cat and Doug. Oh, Cat and Doug. <laughs> wow. Okay. I heard God's voice and it sounded like Amber. <laughs> yes. Cat and Doug are back there. Believe it or not, and a lot of people had a hard time with this, but Cat and Doug have a huge, huge ministry here, like so many other people. These people <laughs> behind the cameras have a huge ministry. Cat and Doug's ministry, they said, can we give communion every week? And they said that, I guess, going about three and a half, four years ago now. And I said, I think that's a great idea. So they serve communion on Sundays, and when not here, that we have a team in place. But Cat and Doug are, um, are back there serving communion. This is uh, really an outward display of your inward decision to have followed Christ, to turn your will and life over and say, God, I invite your spirit in. I ask you to lead me and guide me the way you will. His body was broken for the forgiveness of your sins. His blood was spilled out so that you could be washed clean, so that, so that we can be forgiven and forgiven completely, so that his spirit can enter into us and lead us and guide us. That's what that's all about. And if you've invited the spirit of Christ into your heart, then you've been invited and adopted into God's family, and you're invited to dine at the table. And they'll explain a little bit from there. Go ahead and ask him to pray for you if you like, and they'll help.
song right there is the best thing we can hold on to. So many people are worried about what's going on in the world, what's going on in our politics, what's going on in our finances. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We can face tomorrow. A group of young ladies came to talk to the preacher. And this is what they had to say. They said, Some of our members have started this. if God could be your best friend? Amen. Well, Amen. good. He already is. <laughs> Ready?
like you mean it. I am a friend. He calls me friend. safe out there okay if you can drive safe 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 not everybody can just be aware of the other guys on the road god bless you have a great week <laughs>